Kunal, first of all, uh, I would like to warmly welcome you on Filmy Shilmi. Um, as I just literally told you, I've been wanting to kind of speak with you for quite some time. And I'm really, really grateful that today uh, has happened. So a warm welcome to you. Thank you. And how's the lockdown treating you? I, I was, in fact, there in December and I left just in time. Uh, when I came, I, everything was open. Then one by one, everything started shutting. I came on thing on the 13th of December. Then right. everything. Uh, so first the uh, shops were shut, then the yeah. restaurants were shut. Then I said, okay, I'm out of here. Then I left yeah. on the 20th. Right, yes. No, I think you left at the right time, actually, because that was before the actual lockdown was in force. Yeah. So you definitely have left for a long time. But I think lockdown aside, I mean, a huge congratulations on um, uh, Lahore Confidential on Z5 Global. Um, I, I think it's quite interesting because the fact that you kind of, I guess, explore counterterrorism angle again after FUNA, yeah. you know. So, I mean, what sort of prompted you to kind of do that again for Lahore Confidential? Well, um, the idea was in mind, but the script came uh, came to me and the subject came to me with Richa Chadda. And honestly, one of the reasons for doing the film was Richa because I was very keen to work with her. So I said, okay, let's let's do this film and let's uh, explore her talents and see how uh, you know we can uh, work together and collaborate. And I really enjoyed our collaboration. I think it was wonderful working with Richa Arunuda and Karishma Karma. I think all three actors have been wonderful. Right. And I think also, you know, Kunal, um, essentially a filmmaker is a filmmaker. I mean, regardless of uh, what you're what you're trying to portray. But I mean, throughout the making of Lahore Confidential, was there ever a, a point where you had to kind of give due consideration to the fact that you're making it for an OTT platform? No, I think that that only came about when the, uh, there were certain things that they had fixed and they didn't want to budge from there. And I had certain things which I wanted to do. And they were like, no, 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 you can't do that. We, we want to do it this way. Otherwise, there was nothing else because it was uh, the scale of it was as big as the film. And you could release the film in, uh, in theaters, though the length is short. Uh, but uh, otherwise, you could very well. I mean, the way the film looks, you could definitely release it in theaters. And I think that's the beauty of uh, expression of content. That you know, content is content, whether it's cinematic or it's OTT ish, <laughs> or it's uh, satellite TV ish, or whatever it is, or it's a play. Right. Uh, content is content. Yes, absolutely. Um, and I think because obviously Z Five Global is obviously a very great platform as well, and um, I've also seen a lot of um actors who, like for example, we have Seth, we've had um Sushmita recently as well, who have been uh, very renowned names uh, in Bollywood, but they've also kind of forayed onto the digital space. So was yeah. this shift something you were always aspiring to do or always wanting to do? Or is it just because it's just had to happen, so it happened? I think it's a mix of both. I, I wanted to work on digital as well. And I want to do cinema always. Cinema is my first love and I always want to do cinema. But I think it was a mix of both. It came, uh, we, they, we shot it in the middle of the lockdown in October. It was one of the first films to be shot during the lockdown in India. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was one of the first, uh, you know, film productions to resume and start shooting. Um, I think everyone started shooting in September, October, and we started in October. So it was right in the early days. But it was, it was just, uh, so I just wanted to get back and get into work. And I said, okay, let's do this. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, uh, of course, like I said, cinema will always be first love. But you know, today, all cinema ends up on the OTT. Yeah. Uh, whether it's Interstellar or it's uh, Tenet. Tenet. Exactly. Uh, I, I think more people would be seeing Tenet in uh, the digital platforms than they would be seeing in theatres. Than they have seen in theatres. So yeah. I think, you know, it's just here to stay. Exactly. So and I think content that people watch. What does the filmmaker want? The filmmaker wants his content to be watched by everybody. You want your film to be watched by the maximum number of people. Hmm. So whether they watch it in theaters or they watch it at home, it doesn't matter. Just watch it. Yes, that, that, that's something that I've also had a lot of discussions with a lot of friends as well who, um, who've had their films released as well recently, as well as perhaps OTT releases um, too. Um, but I think because you did mention that you kind of had to resume shooting as well um, 
during lockdown. Um, how was the shift after? Like, I mean, what, there must have been quite a lot of differences on set, right? Because I presume, obviously, social distancing guidelines must have been in place and you probably had to make sure it was all very clean and sanitization. So what was it like, I mean, to kind of go back to that sort of atmosphere? Oh, I think it was um, a completely different atmosphere. I am a very hands-on person. I, for every shot, I sit on the camera and I see the shot through the camera lens. Yeah. I couldn't do that because the camera was touched by a few people and I did not, and they couldn't possibly sanitize the camera every time I touched it or every time I wanted to look through it. So I couldn't look through the camera. So I had to keep going there and say, okay, now put the shot like, this. okay, now a little bit here, a little bit left, a little left, up, down, 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 that's it. So that was one big change. Um, the other thing was that, you know, on a film set, any property, let's say this team, this uh, coffee mug, hmm. okay, coffee mug will be brought by the art director, put on the set, given to an assistant, the assistant will hold it, he'll keep place it somewhere, the camera department will shift it a little bit like this, then a little bit like this, then I'll say, you know, put it here, then they put it here, then the actor will come and touch it. Ten people have touched it already. Uh, right. On a COVID See, on a COVID set, you can't do that. This coffee mug cannot be touched by 10 people. One person brings it, wipes it clean, puts it down, then you touch it. That's the discipline that needs to be maintained. Hmm. So you got you to think completely different. You got to, uh, your entire mindset has to be changed. Uh, you got to have fewer people on set, which is really sad. And that's not what you want because, you know, so many people have sat at home for a year in the lockdown. You want as many people to be on set so that they get their daily wages. Hmm. Uh, you want them there. Uh, but you still need lesser people on set. So you got to have social distancing. Um, I used to sit and, in fact, today I was shooting for something else. Uh, I'm doing a project for Lionsgate India Play. I mean, for Lionsgate Play India. Uh, and uh, even on set, even today, whether it was, it, it started on all confidence and I'm maintaining the same discipline here. Everyone stays six feet away from me. I'm like, <laughs> stay away from me. Don't come near me. I don't want anyone. I, I mean, and people just come, hi, sir. And they put their hand for me. Like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, we, we got to stop this. You know, do an abha, do an namaste. Do hi. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I think this, this is this is it, isn't it? Like, I think um, it's funny because actually a film you produced, uh, Break Ke Baad, actually, there was a song in there called Duriya Bhi Hai Zaruri. I think it's the most... <laughs> well said, buddy. <laughs> it's the most appropriate time we can actually use this song and use this yeah. lyric, I think. It should be the COVID mantra. Yeah, I know, right? I I think this could be like a jingle for like an ad, but like for an ad out. But I think uh, that aside as well, I think, but I'll just speaking a bit more about you as a filmmaker. Um, I think for quite some time, I mean, obviously excluding Fana, uh, we had seen you do and explore a lot of storylines which were quite romantic and quite uh, coming of age. And I would even say candy floss romance as well. And that includes Teddy Mary Kahani too. Um, yeah. So in what way would you say perhaps Lahore Confidential is your way of breaking away from that sort of style of cinema that you've done previously? Well observed, well observed, I must say. Uh, completely breaking away and uh, looking at something that's a lot more sensitive in terms of uh, uh, the relationships between two nations. Mm. You know, it's, it's very strange. When Indians and Pakistanis are in their own countries, uh, they'll sit and uh, fall prey to this narrative. The mm. moment they step out of their country and they meet in the UK, where you are, mm. there's suddenly no animosity. <laughs> They're friendly. They, they work together. They live together. They, uh, you know, everything's positive and happy, go lucky. So I think what, what we got to understand is that, yes, there is a tension between two countries. Mm. Do we want the tension? No, we don't. Nobody wants it. Right. Uh, no individual can stand up and say, I want this tension with this country. Mm. That's wrong. Who will say that? Mm. You know, why will you stand up as an individual and say, I want to have tension with this country? Who will not? It's a narrative that is forced down people's throats for various reasons. It's a narrative we all fall prey to. Let's look at getting away from this narrative and, you know, uh, 
trying to look at things in a more positive light. Mm. And I hope one day we can achieve that. Right. You know, it's just, it's just, uh, I'm not being just a dreamer, as my Twitter handle says, you know, about following John Lennon and you may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you join us. Yes, I am a dreamer at that level I mean, and, 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 and at one way, but at the same time, I'm, a realist enough, I'm, I'm realistic enough to say there is tension, there is strife, but let's try and get past it. Right, right. And you know, actually, Kunal, I wanted to kind of uh, mention this to you because I was, I was thinking about this the other day and uh, mm-hmm. I watched Fana again and I actually really liked that film. And the reason why I say that is because when you're making a film, which is actually essentially a love story, but yet it turns out that the character, the male character is actually a A bad, an antagonist, right, exactly, a terrorist. You have to get that sort of balance right in terms of not glorifying or romanticizing the idea of falling in love with the terrorist. And you have to focus on the sentiments of the love. Um, So when you do have a subject like Fana and like Lahore Confidential, um, how difficult is it for you as a filmmaker to get that perfect balance in terms of, making sure it's not morally or ethically wrong or questionable in any way? Well, I think the important thing is to understand that once man, uh, that one man's terrorist is another man's militant. Right. Uh, both people are fighting for their own causes and fighting for something to believe in. Who makes who right? One person thinks that one's right and the other thinks this one's right. So uh, they're both right from their point of views. It's like, you know, the common thing, if, if I write a six from my side here, you'll see it as a nine. Mm. You know, you see a six, I see it as a six. Are you right or am I right? Mm. Uh, argue and say that, oh, hello, terrorism is terrorism. Right. That guy's calling himself a terrorist. He's calling himself a militant. So, like I said, one man's terrorist is another man's militant. Hmm. So that's the difference. And you've got to uh, seize the sensitivity of that and then rise above all that and look at just the romance of it. You know, just see the romance of it. And, uh, but there comes a point in that romance where you've got to follow uh, a balance and you've got to see that, okay, this is the reality. Like in Fana Kajol has to pull the trigger and shoot out. That is the reality. Yeah. She has to do it. In Lahore Confidential, Richa has to, actually in both uh, cases, the woman pulls the trigger. Hmm. Coincidence. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, actually, that is a yeah. very good coincidence. I was like, are you yeah. sure Lahore isn't, okay. Lahore Confidential isn't just like a spin-off to Fana? I think, like, okay. it seems... <laughs> well, I didn't write Lahore Confidential. Someone else wrote it. I just directed it. So it's someone else's script. If, uh, if, if, <laughs> Their spin off, not mine. Just, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, yeah, so I think that uh, the the thing to understand is that you have to follow a fine balance and not uh, get into what's the word I'm looking looking for jingoism. Don't get into jingoism. You know, mm. see at everyone's point of view. Take a stand because you have to take a stand at some point in time, and then then don't get jingoistic about it. Right. Yeah, I think that balance, like you mentioned, and have to rise above the main subject matter and to focus on your core essence of a film. I think that is definitely something which I I, I would like to think is very important. Um, And I think also, I just love the fact that uh, no matter which film of yours I've seen post Fana, I think barring perhaps Hora Pyaat Hora Magic, uh, I think I've always seen a shyery sort of come into your works as well. Like in Teri Meri Kahani, we cannot forget um, Javed and Aradna Sub. Yes, exactly. Yes. So uh, Javed this... did a lot of time. Fine's <laughs> character did a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. I think almost every second dialogue of his was a shayari. So I think it was quite yeah. cool to see that. And again, we have that in Lahore Confidential as well. So I, I guess it's something which you're quite, I guess you're quite a shayarana person yourself. Right? Uh-huh. 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 Okay, so you know what? Language is getting destroyed. Mm. I mean, uh, LOL, uh, you know, uh, what is that? What is talk to later? TTLY. <laughs> what are we doing? Where, will, where does Shairi stand a chance with LOL and TTLY and all this nonsense? 
you know language is expression if expression keeps diminishing to a few words and the and words that have no meaning i don't i'm i'm not saying that you need lots of words to express something you can express something with a few words but words are beautiful shaidi is uh, expression of thought mm. i i would like to keep alive language good language i would like to keep alive uh, poetry whether it's urdu shayari or hindi shayari i'd like to keep alive language good hindi good urdu right you know that there's nothing more beautiful than good poetry mm. so i think that's important and it doesn't have to be deep shayari uh teri saaso ko you know it, it doesn't have to be deep shayari but it can be light hearted shayari you know phool hu gulab ka chameli ka mat samajhna phool hu gulab ka chameli ka mat samajhna aashiq hu aapka sahel ka mat samajhna it doesn't matter be tapori shayari but they should be shayari in life yeah uh, what is like yeah. exactly and i think a lot of like um yash yashi's films as well kind of revolved around the shayari and the poetic sentiment yeah. i mean kabhi kabhi silsila in fact i just wish i mean if there's a uh, one film i wish yashi had been uh, was uh, the film on sahir's life because i don't think anybody in this world uh, could do more justice to the story of sahir ludhiyan with any other chopra because yeah. he knew him he worked with him uh, sahir is uh, some of sahir's finest work was with yashi yes so i think i mean i i just wish yashi had made uh, Sahir's life story. Uh, indeed, I, I mean, I miss him as a whole. I miss his. In a, way, in, a way, in a way, he did. In a way, he did with Kavi Kavi because that was unfulfilled love. Uh, yeah. So, in a way, that was, uh, uh, you know, Sahir's. Uh, is owed to him, right? Love story. Uh, love story. But I wish yes, uh, yes, she had made uh, the story of Sahir Lutia. Yeah, you know, you were saying about well, what is this lol and lamao and ttyl and all of that. I think what we can make a shahidi on the spot. We can say, "Kya hai ye lol? Band kar do jhol." There we go. That's that's our little shahidi. Why <laughs> not? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> so that's our little shahidi session done there and then. But I think um I think coming back to Lahore Confidential uh, on yeah. Zee Global. I mean, in light of Ananya in the in the film, um. and i've seen across your filmographies your films are headlined by female characters who might be strong on the outside but of might have a fragility within them or maybe vice versa as well i mean has this been a trait you consciously decide to include in your female protagonists in your films well i think um strong women and most women are stronger than men yeah most women are stronger than men i mean uh, we get a paper cut and we start screaming what will happen to us with childbirth <laughs> i don't think that chance uh, women are uh, so much stronger than men hmm. and i think um, our cinema needs to show that um, we need to progress in life the reason i don't like feminism is because i anyway i believe women are stronger than men so i think this whole feminism thing uh is very sad because men who treat women in a different way are just pathetic mm. you know men who think they are superior to women are pathetic right women are the superior race women are uh, the superior sex mm. you know they are far more superior than men in so many ways they look so much better i mean start with uh start with being shallow <laughs> start with the physical appearance i mean look at a man's body horrible look at a woman's body amazing okay right. now get deeper hmm. uh how many roles that a woman plays look at the strength of a woman's character uh, tell a man to change his surname ha no chance hmm yeah, one doesn't think Yeah. Uh, the different uh, roles and characters a woman plays in all through her life amazing incredible the strength of a woman now that's that's the power of a woman now i think that now how can you not in cinema portray women uh, as uh, the stronger of our species 
And that's what I strive to do. And that's what I would love to do always. Show really strong willed women, strong character. That you, you don't really, you don't quite understand or you don't quite like it. What do you mean exactly by that? As in by you don't like feminism? I just wanted to kind of clarify. Yes, I, think, I think women are anywhere stronger than men. So what are we talking about? Hmm. Women are stronger than men. Women are, uh, you know, it's not about giving a man a woman's job. It's give a man a woman's job. He can't do it. Right. Sure. Yeah. I think most of the times as well, I think it also is about the cerebral opportunities as well in terms of um, like, you know, for example, an equal pay, for example, you know, it's, it's stuff like that. I think where it does become a problem where there's like that whole distinction. Um, I'm hoping that it's all changing now. I mean, what do you think? Do you think it's all changing now? I, I don't know. I think in, in certain cases, we're getting a little more aggressive. Uh, uh, women are being targeted a lot more. And I think when men get insecure, they target them. Hmm. Uh, when men are insecure and threatened by women, they target them more. And I think that's what's sad. And I think that's what's wrong. Now that we're talking about this whole gender roles in society, I feel like when you made Hamtum as well, I think it came at a time when it such discussions were not as common within our society. Like it was there, but not really acknowledged. Um, do you think, had you have made a film like Hamtum now, because even now when I'm on Twitter, I see a lot of people loving the film. Even I tweet about the film quite a lot as well. How do you think the reactions or perhaps uh, uh, would have been different maybe uh, had you have made the film now and released it now? No, I think it would be uh, as much of a cult film as it is. I mean, it, it is a cult film. I mean, there's no yeah. denying that, debating that. Hamtum is a cult. Mm. Uh, it's a cult film. It's uh, a landmark piece of Indian cinema. If I, even if, even though I say it myself, uh, but that's something I have no control over because films like that just happen. You know, films like uh, Hamtum just happen. You can't design them. Uh, we made it very scared. We were very scared of how it's going to be accepted, whether oh. it's going to be accepted or not. Uh, we were shit scared. We were not. It took us till uh, Monday evening to accept that the film is a hit. Uh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were, we were shit scared that this film is not going to run. We were shit scared that no one's going to watch the film. Uh, we, were, we were so much on the back foot. Hmm. But our thoughts were on the front foot, using cricket term, uh, terminology. Um, our thoughts were way ahead of the times, which we didn't even realize. We, we were just making a film. We were just making a film we believed in. When I say we, I mean Adi Chopra. I mean. We were just making a film we believed in. And we just went ahead and made it. Uh, but were we super confident? Not at all. We were shit scared. We thought people won't understand the film. <laughs> It'll be a disaster. But we just loved the script and we wanted to make it. And wow. we did it with all our conviction. And the beauty is, uh, I think... Uh, how many ever films, big blockbuster hits Adi Chopra might make or I might make in future, um, Hamtum will always be special for both of us. It'll always be a, a defining film in Hindi cinema. It will not just be another blockbuster hit or another... I mean, there might be films that are far bigger hits than Hamtum, but they'll be forgotten. But Hamtum will never be forgotten. Hamtum will always be that cult film that changed cinema. Uh, Rom-coms would not have started if it wasn't for Hamtum. Yeah, exactly. No, definitely created a separate space. I think even for Seth as well, it was a very uh, big image changer for him as well. Um, I think as well in his career. Um, so I think it was a very special film. But actually speaking of Hamtum, I remember seeing um, the two cartoon characters of Ham and Tum. And then in Pirse, you had also, um, there was a fairy yeah. and, and, and that gentleman the, with the suit. The, yeah, the yeah. So, in the yeah. That's it. So I was wondering, I mean, what sort of, determines you to include such sort of traits um, in the films? I mean, what was the main idea for you to do this? Well, I think, you know, you just gotta, uh, I just like to express things differently. You know? like, I, I like seeing things in a different way. Uh, why say things in the same way? Try and be different, try and say things differently. Hmm. There's, uh, there was this uh, song, I think in Chori Chori, Raj Kapoor, Mm. Uh, Raj Kapoor, uh, he didn't direct that film, he acted in Chori Chori, where they were puppets, you know, yeah. jati mohi chale ha, 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 ha. puppets, uh, 
Right. And I just thought, I thought that was so beautiful. That was so expressive. That was so different. That was uh, in the 50s at some point in time. And they had this thing of actors dancing like puppets. I was like, that's cinema. That's cinematic. You should always think differently. Think out of the box. Why do something the way everyone's doing it? Right. Yeah, no, I think it's true. You definitely need to be creative, especially nowadays where competition is so high. You definitely have to stand out. But it's competition, it's, it's just about expression. Hmm. Okay, yeah, even you better. Anyone but yourself. True, very true. Um, obviously, it's been many years since you began your journey as a feature film director, like you did with Mutsid Dosi Karoge. Um, what has been the biggest change in you as a person since then? And how do you think that change has perhaps impacted you with the way you look at films and the way you present films now? So I was shooting today. Uh, and I think every day that I go on set, I'm as scared as I was in the first day that I went on set as a director. <laughs> No. <laughs> because I know that I'm on set as a director, everybody, from the spot to the actor, uh, to the cameraman, to the sound recorders, everybody's looking at me and asking in their heads, okay, what is he going to set up now? What's the shot he's going to set up? How's he going to look like? What's he going to look like? What is he going to say yes to? What is he going to say no to? How's he going to design the shot? Everyone's looking at me. The director is is not just the captain of the ship. He's designing the ship. He's designing the course of the ship. He's designing the flowers in the ship. He's designing everything. Hmm. So uh, it sort of gives me sleepless nights and uh, in excitement. Like, Tomorrow I'm going to go and do this. Hmm. So I think uh, as much as uh, like the Simon and Garfunkel song, uh, after changes upon changes, we're still the same. So after changes upon changes, I'm still the same. I'm still scared and I'm still excited every day on set for every shot. Nicely put. Very I nice. That never changes. No, no. I hope that never changes either, actually. I think we're loving... We, I, I mean, I have grown up watching films like and stuff. So you can imagine, I don't want you to change at all in terms of the style of content you put out there. But I think actually I wanted to talk a bit about uh, your acting stint as well. Um, mm -hmm. So I really, really like Pirse. And I think one of the main reasons why I really like Pirse was, I mean, obviously because you were directing it and you were in the film and of course, Jennifer. And then thirdly, it's the fact that it's one of the first mainstream Bollywood Hindi films, I would say that actually has... Um, a, a homosexual couple playing the parents of the lead. And I think we had never ever seen that before. Um, so would you ever be interested, I think, um, number one, in continuing your acting career? I mean, what's what's the status update with that? And secondly, how would you like to also uh, carry on uh, making such stories which are very um, supportive towards the LGBTQIA community? Uh, I'm so glad you asked me this question. Um, I, as an individual, uh, working in the film industry where we have people of all sexual orientations working together, yeah. and uh, we make nothing. It really is nothing. It's just like is someone vegetarian or non-vegetarian. It's that. Exactly. It's it's just that. Are you veg or non-veg? Um, will you have uh, you know, a chicken kati or a veg kati roll. <laughs> it's the same thing. I mean, how does it matter what someone's sexual orientation is? It really doesn't matter. Uh, to me, to a few people, but sadly to a lot of people it does. Uh, I'm so glad that you saw that in Pirse, that I tried to uh, show this gay couple who adopt a male child and bring him up with a different mindset. Um, not too many people have seen that in per se. Uh, and I think, uh, I wish we can have more of that in cinema. And the other beauty of that character, of those two characters were that they were very normal they, uh, people. They were not caricatures. Yes, exactly. Generally when uh, filmmakers, uh, and I think 90% filmmakers are uh, guilty of uh, showing gay characters as caricatures. And I think it's really sad. Uh, we got to show them as 
exactly who they are just normal people like all of us we are we are all the same mm. it doesn't matter what your orientation is um and i think that's that's one thing i was trying to show in person i'm glad you saw it mm. and uh, i don't know uh, it um, so i think am i going to act more right now i've got a few directing assignments which i'm very happy with and i'm going to continue doing those for a while so let's see Hmm. Right. Focus on that. Do you know what actually Kunal actually uh, this is actually perhaps maybe take it as a as a suggestion or like as a as a request from a great fan of your works. I would love to see a humtum style of a film or a pirsa style of a film but between two men or two women. I think <laughs> that would be really? amazing. Please okay. make that. Okay. Let's see. Maybe oh, I would. Yes. Great idea. Great think, idea, by the way. So obviously, with an array of content emerging on the web now, and I think you said that you're working on a few contents yourself at the moment, yeah. few directorials. Um, what sort of works and title style of movies are you quite interesting? Uh, interested in making now, in particular. I want to experiment with every genre. I'm uh, I'm very hungry. I think. Uh, the last few years have been my appetizers and i want to get into the main course now and make lots of content in different genres whether it's the underworld or it's action or thrillers or love stories or uh, you know gay love stories anything just want to make different content and interesting content absolutely yes and i'm rooting for that as well and i think um seeing um you know content like lahore confidential on z5 global made by you i think it's definitely something very special and i think it's definitely a a great way for you to kind of explore yourself creatively as a filmmaker and uh, on that note you know i just wanted to say a huge thank you for joining me on film with me uh it thank was you. it was a long wish to interview you and i'm really really glad that uh, we could finally make it happen thank you thank you thank you so much thank you Okay bye bye